well particulate radiation is something is one of the type of ionizing radiation sir right so we talked about this and uh, what we will do is the order in which we will proceed is uh, we'll try to understand how does uh, particulate right radiation interact with the material and then go to electromagnetic and how it interacts electromagnetic radiation and how it interacts with the material okay in that order we will go so when we talked about uh, particulate recall of course these are just proton neutron electron are listed here but you could also have other you know particulate for example alpha particle or beta particle so you will come across those uh, perhaps when we deal with uh, radioactivity right radio tracers nuclear medicine that we uh, we kind of introduced right so we we will talk about those when we get there but for the purposes of this module where we are interested in understanding predominantly the x ray right x ray aspects because we want to do x ray in projection radiography and x ray ct so we our interest is so far on the x ray part in this uh, uh, module so we will restrict ourselves therefore to the uh, particles that are here more specifically on the electron okay so to reiterate we are only concerned with electron actually we saw this right in one of the examples yesterday when we wanted to calculate the number of atoms that will be ionized we already said in an x-ray tube for example uh, you know we have tungsten at the anode remember so we are only concerned with electron accelerated in an x-ray tube here see that is the uh, particulate radiation that we will use and how how is it used it is used for generating x rays right and so this is in a x ray tube x ray tube generates x ray so we are using a particulate radiation particulate ionizing radiation to generate x ray so we'll see how what happens why x ray comes out so so in this context an electron is accelerated across a tube and that's why it has energy so electron is a particle and it has energy which is sufficient to cause ionization so it is a particulate ionization radiation so now let's move on okay if i have a particulate with enough energy how does it interact with the medium right how does it interact with the material so there are two primary interactions of interest okay first one is very common right which is called as collisional transfer the name is kind of suggestive what is collisional so if i have uh, you know just a uh, just to appreciate the the concept i'm going to use uh, this is not realistic we are not electrons right we don't have that much energy but pretend i i am i have energy i am uh, in a magnified version of an electron and i'm going to with all the energy run through and there lot of people right lot of other electrons they are there what will happen first thing is i will collide with them right i have more energy than them because i am running right i have more kinetic energy so they are all standing there i am going to collide with them what will happen most likely you know most likely i will probably push them by by the impact they will probably moved around i will lose energy by this collision right and then eventually i will lose energy and all of them oh they are now excited right they, i i push them i transfer some energy so they have to come back to their rest state so in the process what will happen they will dissipate energy come back to ground state so there lot of friction there will be heat generation so all the energy that i carried with me when i collide i kind of distribute it and when they come back to rest essentially there is lot of heat dissipation so this is the most common uh, interaction that happens so if i have a charged electron you know essentially it creates heat because it hits the cloud and uh, loses energy is this interesting to us is this important to us what do you think right i mean so we say that if you have a charged electron right you give sufficient energy it will go interact in this manner and this is the most common interaction is this do, in your mind do you think it is a useful interaction or 
not so useful interaction well useless or useful depends on the context what is our context we want to generate x rays what is generated oh it is produces heat <laughs> that means your x ray tube right is going to get heated up that's all right so it's not really useful for our purpose what is our purpose i want x ray energy to come out right i don't want heat energy to come out so it's common but it is going to take place there is going to be heating so when you design a tube you'll have to make sure that you have mechanism so that there is no overheating and stuff so we'll come to that when we do the instrumentation okay so what could be the other inter so clearly this is not this is most common but it's not really that useful for us what is going to be useful for us for us we need to produce x rays or energy that comes out with x ray range right so that is going to happen due to radiative transfer this is the one that produces x ray of course even there that radiative transfer there are two kind of mechanisms or two phenomena through which x rays are generated right one is going to be the characteristic radiation right where we kind of uh, talked about this uh, even in the intro right so essentially when you knock out the electron in the k shell remember the organization structure of an atom that's where we probably mentioned this uh, and we talked about ionization in the previous lectures so that there there's where we said you know you you knock an electron and becomes ions so this is a radiation ionizing radiation so it all makes sense right so characteristic radiation is a phenomenon where when you have a energetic electron that goes and collides right you have radiate uh, into a material you have electron cloud you have radiative transfer and uh, the collision with k shell produces characteristic radiation we'll go into that in the, in the subsequent slide the other most useful interaction is bremsstrahlung radiation right bremsstrahlung radiation what happens here we are talking about k shell that is electrons so when a charged electrons right when a high energy electron goes interacts with the electron cloud you have something here then there is a nucleus right so this one essentially has to do with when the charged um, you know uh, energetic electron particulate that goes and interacts with the nucleus that time uh, energy is released and that turns out to be in the x radiation x ray energy level and this is more common than characteristic radiation so from a x ray tube for example it's actually the bremsstrahlung radiation that gives us the energy mostly okay so we will go look into each of this in the subsequent uh 20 30 minutes okay so here is a sketch we will uh, basically start with uh, the first one right which is collisional transfer and then move on to characteristic and bremsstrahlung so so collisional transfer what happens in collisional transfer right let me just re show the the corresponding sketch very intuitive right i gave you an analogy of me running and you know similar you pretend that's a electron the electron has energy now it is going and this is an atoms cloud right you have an atom you have electron cloud around it you have a nucleus and electron that compose the atom so what could happen first thing is like i said you go in you start to interact right lose some energy and with reduced energy you go further interact here with reduced energy you go further you interact here so in the each process you lose energy and whenever this come back right when the rearrangement takes place here it essentially gives you a heat energy so it's small energy that comes in the infrared ra radiation uh, range and so that happens so that is clear so it is only collisional it doesn't really knock another electron out or anything like that it just loses energy but it still has enough energy to go to interact with the next atom electron cloud of the next atom loses energy there and subsequently until it has energy it will do interact and then die out so what about this guy 
ah this is a interesting uh, secondary effect so you have this electron goes if it turns out that it can knock another electron right if it can knock that electron and give it sufficient energy it's like so i was running several of you right in in our in our analogy so when i go yeah if i try to push through the crowd people will realign i will lose energy there will be lot of friction heat but then it could also happen that maybe i latch on to someone and i transfer lot more energy which is sufficient for that person to actually start to go further down and push other people right that is exactly what's happening here so the charged electron goes knocks out it transfers lot of energy to that right uh to that particular electron notice it is on the outer right so the energy as you go away from the center the binding energy is also going to be less okay so it is going to knock out this guy and that is going to have sufficient energy so now that is an electron with enough energy to go so essentially that is another particulate right that can go and do the interaction it's exactly analogous to you have the uh, particulate radiation coming and interacting with this atom delta ray is nothing but if this electron is knocked out so this is a secondary so this is exactly same as what would happen so the same interaction of this will now can undergo colloidal or another delta right depending on the energies involved another delta and then so on and so forth but essentially the idea is even here that's going to be mostly colloidal so nothing much happens only heat is generated here so the energetic electron collides with an atom in the target so only a small fraction of the energy is transferred okay so if that is the case it is transferred to another electron so it is going to locally readjust itself and then come back to ground state giving that extra energy out right so as the affected atom returns to its original state small energy comes i mean when i say small what do i mean i mean it gives out energy but that energy is in the infrared radiation so heat is generated okay so if you actually recall i would it won't be a bad idea to uh, look through our first uh, electromagnetic radiation spectrum that was shown right there, there was a lambda scale there was a frequency scale there was a energy scale we will actually end up referring to that a lot in this lecture and the next lecture and the reason so it might be handy if you want to just uh, pull that out and have it ready so you will notice that infrared spectrum the energy is less compared to your x ray soft x ray hard x ray gamma rays right we had and then on the on the lower side you had microwave rf and so on and so forth so yeah so there is a energy that is coming out that happens to be in the infrared range so heat is generated occasionally like i said you could have enough energy right large fraction of the incident energy is transferred to another electron and that is freed and now you can pretend that this delta ray is going to behave like all the process we talked about it is going to do colloidal and uh, radiate further down <laughs> clear okay so we so the incident electrons path may be redirected and subsequent interaction so so it's kind of uncontrolled right so you go in and then lot of atoms are there and this is going to happen so this is going to continue okay so what we are interested here is understand that we are talking about uh, energized particulate that is interacting with a atom so it can produce in this way essentially heat so this is of not that um from a signal point of view this is not going to contribute to our signal okay fine so let us move on to the more interesting stuff because we want to produce x rays first is the characteristic x ray what do we mean by characteristic x ray oh remember the electron goes knocks out a k shell right let's see here so the electron this has energy it goes but it has enough energy what is that enough energy here recall our binding energy concept right so this has to have energy that is greater than the binding energy 
of the casual electron of this atom. If it has energy greater than the binding energy, then it will release this electron. See, that is why we talked about ionization, right? So, this is going to eject this electron out. So, subsequently what will happen? If this is ejected, rearrangement is going to take place. Recall how we talked about excitation, ionization, right? So, rearrangement is going to take place. So, the shell, the electrons from outer shell will start to fill in the void and rearrange itself. In the process, the extra energy comes out. How does the extra energy come out? It comes out in the form of electromagnetic radiation. We will define electromagnetic radiation uh, subsequently after we finish particulate interaction, but uh, you would have heard about electromagnetic radiation already, whatever comes to your mind, right, about electromagnetic radiation remember the spectra that we showed, uh, that is sufficient at this point. Okay. So, energy comes out as a electromagnetic radiation in the, the energy is in the x-ray range. So, that is x-radiation. We still have to understand why it is characteristic. What do you think? Why is it characteristic? Well, I have energy that I know I am putting in. Let us say, right. If I know what is the energy coming out? Can I then say anything about the atom or the material? Right? In other words, if this energy that you are getting is unique to a particular transition that is taking place for a particular atom. So, from this energy, oh, you tell me you are observing 576 kilo electron volt, then I will tell you that that atom is tungsten. Right? If you can do that, then that is characteristic. So, the x-ray that is coming out at the energy levels because x-ray energy is wide range. So, from the energy of the x-ray, if you can tell what probably is the atom that is involved in ionization that has given out this x-ray, then that is characteristic x-ray. Okay. So, we will we'll spend one more slide on, on that. So, the incident electron collides with casual electron. We talked about this exciting or ionizing the atom, leaving a hole in that shell. So, the k electron shell is having a hole. Then rearrangement takes place. As the atom returns to its ground state, the k shell hole is filled. When it is filling high energy to ground state low energy, that means it has to shed out the extra energy. So, that loss of energy creates an electromagnetic photon okay, known as the characteristic x-ray. So, now this is the deal, right? The energy of the photon, what is the energy of the photon that is going to come? Because it is transitioning, right? High energy to low energy. So, there is a realignment that is taking place. So, it has to be the difference between the energy of the two shells, right? Because it is transitioning. So, the energy that is coming out I know the binding energy of k electron of the atom, I know the binding energy of a l atom, I know the binding energy of m electron, m shell, right. For a given atom, if I know the binding energies at respective shells, then perhaps if I know the energy that is coming out and that happens to be a difference between energy of two shells. So, in other words, it is actually element dependent then I can identify that element right from the energy. So, it is characteristic of that atom. It is characteristic of this two shells that are involved in rearrangement. That is why it is characteristic x-ray. Clear? But uh, one another point that you may want to recognize here is that means I am going to get energies, right? discrete energies discrete energy level. So, uh, energy comes out at a particular energy level. That is a key. Okay. So, because of that I may be able to tell what two shells are involved and therefore, what atom it is. So, it is discrete in nature. Okay. Uh, so, what is the uh, other one? So, before we go just to extra material for you to uh, appreciate the conventions, right? 
so caused by removal of inner shell of the electrons and subsequent filling of the holes okay this is what we just saw so there is there are some conventions because we said characteristics x ray right and you know which shell is transitioning so there are conventions for naming this so the shell energy difference determines the energy of the characteristic so how do we communicate this how do we be more specific about it here so you have different shells k l m right you have a hole and there is a transition that is taking place to fill the hole and in the process electromagnetic energy comes out in the x radiation okay again we'll we'll see this again electromagnetic radiation when the energy comes out as photons the energy is h mu we'll we'll define that okay so the point is this comes out so now the question is if this is characteristic there could be jump from l to k or m to k or m to l there are so many jumps because it is going to reorganize itself rearrange itself so is there a better way and each energy could be characteristic it should be it could be different depending on the respective binding energies involved so is there a better way to um you know communicate this right so what they do is the lines are named oh what is lines just uh, as i said what uh, what are these energy levels are discrete right so if you do the spectrum of energy right you will have lines only at certain discrete locations you will have the characteristic x radiation depending on wh what is the characteristic right so these are what is considered lines so it is in the spectrum remember spectral lines lines are named after lower shell involved in the process what is a lower shell k is the lowest l m n so lower shell that is involved in the process right that shell will be used the upper shell involved is denoted by greek letters what does that mean for example if there is a shell transition is n delta n is one one shell transition you can have that one shell transition anywhere right i can have m to l or l to k both of this is one shell transition so it turns out that if it is one shell we call it alpha transitions if it is two shells we call it beta transitions but then we use the lower letter lower shell involved in the process so if i want to communicate that some transition happened from l to k delta n is 1 so that is a alpha transition so whatever is receiving lower shell is k so if i want to communicate that i will say k alpha right so let's see so some energy levels so that's why i said it's for tungsten all these are known right each shell what could be so this is your k this is your l if you are transitioning from l to k you are having one jump delta n equal to 1 which is alpha transition so it is alpha transition and you are using the lower shell involved so k so k alpha if you say k alpha then you know you are transitioning from here to here if you are doing k beta that means beta is 2 so k beta so that means lower is k beta is 2 that means this would have come from two levels up right m m to k transition likewise here if you notice l is the lower energy lower shell alpha means one transition l alpha represents m to l transition l beta represents n to l and so on and so now you understand that means all this the energy levels are unique so if if it is jumping and the energy that comes out is uh, is also in the x ray range that is a unique energy so you can tell whether that x ray characteristic x ray is a l alpha or a k alpha right you can or a k beta you know based on the energy and the uh, energy that is observed you can tell and that is unique to the atom 
because each shell, each bonding, binding energy of different atoms are different, slightly different, right? So, that is why it is characteristic. Okay, good. So, this part is done. So, let us move on to, okay, this is actually giving you some signal, but still this is not uh, really that helpful. Why? Oh, this is going to just give me one X-ray energy at that particular uh, line, right? That particular frequency. So, what is the most important interaction from a signal perspective? It is Bremsstrahl lung. Remember what was Bremsstrahl lung? Ah, I told you that it is going to interact with the nucleus. Let us again do some analogy. I mean, I know these probably are very poor analogies. So be it. I mean, at least it gave me some feeling for what it is, right? So, pretend, uh, pretend you are the, the electron with energy. So, it is like you are driving a car in the highway. You have lot of momentum. So, you are going at a velocity, you are accelerating, you have reached and you are really moving fast, right, in the, in the freeway. So, you have enough energy, but then you notice there is this big advertisement, right, something that attracts you, that is flashing. They are standing here and you are able to see that and they are flashing here. Say, let us say uh, 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 an attraction is there right, uh, uh, you know, food promo or some uh, some other thing. So, you see all colorful things and they are trying to, you know, call, catch the attention of everybody who is driving through that freeway. What is going to happen? You will probably apply brake because it is attracting you. You will apply brake, slow down, probably go towards it to get a closer look at it, right. If you are not completely interested, if you are not completely attracted towards it, all likelihood you will you will go further. So, what is happening? There is a center of attraction, it is trying to pull you there. So, you are going fast, it is trying to pull you there. So, you are applying brake, you are slowing down and then you lose energy. So, essentially you lose speed. So, you lose energy because you are braking and then you find that it is not attractive enough, that you have not still lost all the energy and so you detour, right. That is exactly what is happening here. So, the electron is going, the positive charge in the nucleus tries to attract this electron and so it is trying to pull it towards it. In the process, this electron is applying a brake or it is like braking to slow down and it changes path and if it is not completely attracted, it changes direction and goes. So, in the process what is going to happen? Oh, it is applying brake starting here because of this influence, it is continuously applying brake to slow down. So, what is going to happen? It is going to reduce in energy. So, what is happening to the energy? That energy is going to be sent out. So, that energy that it is sending out because of this braking is if it comes out in the x-range, x-ray range, x-ray energy range that is your Bremsstrahl lung x-ray. Why is this Bremsstrahl lung? Oh, that is just a German word that means breaking. So, this is breaking radiation in English if you want to look at it. So, you re relate the analogy why it is breaking. Oh, that is why it is seems like it is slowing down because of this attraction to the nucleus. The nucleus is slowing down. It is breaking the uh, not breaking into pieces, breaking means applying the brakes, right? Breaking and slowing down. So, that energy that comes out because of the braking, because of the slowing down, because of the influence of the nucleus, that ex that energy comes out as in the x-ray range. So, this is a most important thing. This is a continuous, right? You are applying brakes. So, that means you are releasing energy right unlike your characteristic which was shell dependent and therefore there was discrete this is a continuous range of x ray energy that is going to come out okay so let's just put it so as an incident electron approaches the nucleus of an atom the positive charge of the nucleus right that is the attraction here 
tries to bend around the nucleus and decelerates. Decelerates means slows it down. So, the, the picture that you see here kind of represents the uh, meaning, right? Captures the meaning nicely. So, the loss of energy leads to Brahms straw lung. Like I mentioned, important aspect is it is a continuous range. Of course, depends on how much speed is lost, right? How, how, how it is lost. But the point is it is over a continuous range. So, you come with some energy, you start to apply brake, you start to lose energy and the energy that you lose comes out in the X-ray radiation range and eventually it, it goes out, it stops, right? So, uh, in a rare case, in a rare case what can happen? Like in our example, you go, the attraction is too, so attractive that you actually stop the car and go in. So, your car is no more, you are no more on the freeway, right? You are not going to go to another place. You are just attracted here completely. You are, <laughs> for lack of better words, just to say, you are annihilated, <laughs> destroyed, right? Uh, so, the idea is, in which case what has happened? You have a lot of energy you came in, you are completely attracted, you lost all the energy, you are stopping there you lost all the energy. So, all the energy that you carried forward has to be released, emitting a photon. So, occasionally when the incident photon collides with the nucleus, the electron is annihilated. In the process what happens? Emitting a photon with an energy equal to the kinetic energy of the incident. So, this could be the highest possible energy that can come out, clear? So, Probability wise, this is less, occasionally only it can hit. So, mostly it is going to be a continuous wave, continuous uh, scale of energies and the energy should be less than what it came. Only occasionally when this is completely annihilated, the X-ray that comes out will be of the energy that this uh, particulate carried, okay, the highest possible energy. So, the most important message is Brahmstra lung radiation, this interaction is the major source of X-ray generation in your X-ray tube, clear? So, we are interested in understanding how X-rays interact with X-ray energy, interact with body, that is what we are going to study. But before that, to generate X-rays, we use the idea of a particulate with energy, how it interacts with the material and generates X-ray, clear? Of course, in the process, we could not help, but we also touched upon the energies that are coming out is electromagnetic radiation with X energy, okay? So, so we did not still really talk about electromagnetics, which we will do now, but uh, uh, the idea of particulate interaction, I hope you got it. It is important that interaction or the particulate radiation is important in the context of generating X-rays, okay? So, is that our signal? I mean, from a medical imaging perspective, medical imaging systems perspective, is that our signal? Well, that is, a, that is the signal at the input level, right? You have to create a source signal. So, you have created the source signal. So, radiation particulate radiation is useful there. Then we need to understand this e electromagnetic radiation with in X-ray energy range, right? How does that interact with the material? That is the natural because that is what is important from an imaging perspective. I generate this X-ray, send it through the body. So, I need to understand how that interacts with atoms in the body, right, naturally. So, that is what we will do. Before we do that, this is a very important uh, plot that you see here. I think it deserves some um, attention and uh, uh, real appreciation. What you see here, because we will end up using this, because like I said, this is going to be sent into the body. So, this is your signal source, right? This is the signal that is sent into the body. This signal, signal with this characteristic is what is going to be sent into the body. This is output from the X-ray tube, okay? So, this is what is going to go into the body. So, it better spend some time to understand what goes into the body so that when it comes out, 
based on what comes out we have input we have an output can we say something about the medium say that is the goal can we say something about the medium inside right clear so what do you see here two things stand out i mean literally one is standing out right the lines that you see what are these lines these are the characteristic radiation of course example here is tungsten so these are the characteristic radiation what is characteristic radiation we just saw this is your x ray photon energy so this is the photon energy that comes out in x ray uh, range what is the range there is a huge range that is plotted here i think you understand what these are different plots that you see each of them are ending at highest energy here right because this is relative so highest energy here is zero actually there is so here how do you do that how do you generate the highest energy how do you change the energy oh this is just nothing but the voltage right electron is accelerated across a voltage potential so if i do first experiment i have voltage drop of 20 right here i don't see anything so here 40 40 whatever slightly greater than 40 slightly greater than 61 80 100 120 so i run the x-ray tube with different voltage drop each time i do the voltage drop right for that it goes hits, hits the tungsten and x-ray energy is coming out and that x-ray energy the distribution of that energy is what is plotted so when i hit when i when i operated with this whatever 50, about 45 kilovolt potential when i operated with 45 kilovolt potential then i get the kinetic energy is 45 kilo electron volt that goes bombards with the tungsten anode look at the energies that are coming out the energies that are coming out continuous it peaks somewhere and then it drops down in fact if you look at it all of the so if i next increase the voltage i get this plot if i increase the voltage i get this plot so all of them have this kind of a hill shape so it is increasing right the energy the x-ray energy that comes out that is increasing and then it drops down okay number of x-ray photons in each of the intensities that's what this plot is so you have so many so several uh, interesting aspect can be observed one is oh in this plot for example i don't see any lines right i start to see the lines only when i breach some value here i start to see two lines here of course the the amount of that is taller right but then it appears at the same level so when i apply 80 also i get that when i apply 100 also i get that 120 also i get that so what is that oh that is your characteristic radiation at discrete level so depending on the energy that you supply in relation to the k shell binding energy right so if when you applied the 40 whatever 45 it was not sufficient to create characteristic radiation that's why i don't see any characteristic radiation so only when i started heating with slightly greater than the k shell binding energy of the tungsten i start to see char characteristic radiations right so these are characteristic because from the uh, values you can actually comment right because this will be for tungsten these are the transitions so all this can be commented okay just by looking at this spectral line so that is one message so that is literally standing out the other thing is oh yeah we did know that it was continuous bramstrahl lung radiations is continuous so you had two interactions characteristic x-rays and bramstrahl lung x-ray right so one is continuous the other is uh, uh, discrete so this is the interaction that comes out so what is not that explainable is okay when i send high energy right to interact i get more x-ray energy so more photons with x-ray higher uh, energy right that is fine so that is why it is 
but why is it a hill it starts only from here this is kilo electron volt right energy so you could have some hundreds of electron volts right why is it not there why is it not generating that well it turns out that it does generate but then you are looking at a material which is tungsten right so when you have low intensity low energy x rays right the soft x ray range for example or even here if you see it is sloping out it is not like oh it is generating and then it comes down what happens to this it is not generating these intensities why right there is no value no matter how large you apply why because these energies that are generated right the x ray energy that is generated because of these interactions uh, are small enough that it essentially interacts with the the tungsten again right before coming out of the material and it gets absorbed in the tungsten so it just heats up remember colloidal so essentially the low energy that is generated low energy x rays that are generated are generated and also absorbed by the material and therefore it doesn't come out so it has to have some energy before it can start to come out have characteristic and so when that energy is greater than characteristic energy you get characteristic radiation k shell electron binding energy you get characteristic radiation otherwise you get this shape so you can see that if i want to increase the x ray intensity right i can so this peak this peak this peak this peak this peak it seems like it's linear so i can increase the voltage and therefore i can increase the x ray intensity that is coming out okay um of course why is this sloping down and coming to zero ah when does it come to zero that means i have applied 120 kilo electron volt if i want everything to be 120 kilo electron volt to come out that means oh your bramstraw lung remember the occasionally it gets annihilated only then you get all the energy that goes in comes out but statistically that is very less right and therefore when i when i do 120 kilo electron volt i want and i don't see the highest energy anywhere because relatively that's very weak so predominantly what happens is you get when you apply 80 kilo electron volt you get uh, most intensities uh, you get is much lower than the highest there are some and literally negligible or zero is your complete annihilation okay so this is a very important aspect because when i do the x ray tube and i say we are sending x ray energy into the body you know you are not just sending one or the other you are sending a, a spectrum inside remember that we'll come back to that okay so now we should probably make it little more formal because we started using the term uh, with the assumption that you would have definitely heard about this before so here it's kind of uh, just uh, making it formal so i what is electromagnetic radiation oh, so you have electrical and magnetical wave right so both uh, electric and magnetic waves are perpendicular to each other and they travel perpendicular so you know you, the typical electromagnetic uh, wave introduction chapters in your textbooks you will see uh, they'll use a i mean at least that's what i remember from my uh, course right so you have a wall and a floor so there will be sinusoids right what, re depicting one wave electrical wave for example on the floor uh, on the on the wall and magnetic wave on the floor and the direction perpendicular to this plane will be the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave okay so electromagnetic comprises of electric wave and magnetic wave traveling at right angles uh, to each other so we will quickly run through typical electromagnetic waves that we actually have started uh, talking in fact the first uh, spectrum that i showed will be useful it just have that picture and you will recall so we have non ionizing the low energy sides when we talk about ionizing remember we are talking about ionizing human body okay so um, in that context non ionizing are 
radio waves, microwaves, infrared visible and ultraviolet. Ultraviolet, you know, when you push to the limits, uh, still uh, we'll have to be careful. But but still, you know, it depends on. It's considered non-ionizing until here. Okay, what are ionizing? Then starts ionizing. That is, you have energy levels that are greater than 13.6 electron volt binding energy for hydrogen, right? So that it can cause ionization, ionization of the hydrogen atom. So ionizing, we started with the X-rays. Of course, we are interested in X-rays and gamma rays. Gamma rays not probably in this module, but when we go to nuclear medicine. So distinction between what we saw already. Right, the particulate radiation and the electromagnetics. The electromagnetic radiation has no rest mass and no charge. So we talked about the electron and negative charge, and we talked about m zero and m, talking about relative uh, velocity and therefore relativistic mass. That is not applicable here. Although, although electromagnetic wave can display both behaviors. That is, it can either act as particle or wave. Okay. So typically, when we talk about particle, you can th think about uh, right uh, what particle? I mean, it is basically discrete packets, packets of energy or photons, right? Energy of a photon of an electron. So when we talk about uh, particle nature, we are talking about discrete packets of energy, which we call it photons. And we talk about energy of photon, you get the. We saw it in one of the sketches before. The energy comes out as h mu. What is this h? What is this mu? Mu is the frequency. H is your Planck's constant. Okay, so h is your Planck's constant. So, if to characterize the particle nature, when we talk about the energies, h mu tells everything. Okay, which is what we we will we will uh, discuss further, because extra photons come out. With an energy, so that is what we meant. So when you talk about waves, typically, how do you characterize a wave? Oh, you have to wave means you have to have some wave velocity, some wavelength, some frequency, right? So that is your binding equation. So if it is a wave, if you have to describe a wave, you need to know this relation between wavelength, velocity, and frequency. So whichever way you remember, that's fine. This is the way to characterize the wave nature or to describe the wave nature. This will be the parameters that will be used. Clear. So let us stop here. What I would like to do is continue further with uh, interactions of this electromagnetic wave with the material. Thanks.